Hello everybody, this is Havoc with my review on Total War Saga Troy. Troy has seen some major ups and downs over the last year as development looked rocky and inconsistent with Creative Assembly's truth behind the myth approach not really satisfying either the historical or fantasy fanbase. But what about now? In this review, I will dive into the game, show off aspects that worked, the mechanics that didn't, and what I think about the game in its entire context including the epic exclusive. Speaking of the epic exclusive, if you're watching this before day two of release, you can grab Total War Saga Troy for free within 24 hours of launch day. Regardless of your thoughts on the game thus far, free is free. If you're watching post day one release, be sure to check out the link in the description and the comment section. If you choose to buy anything from Epic through that link, you will help directly support the channel and that's always appreciated. Lastly, I was given pre-release access to this game by Creative Assembly, but it will not have any influence over what I'm about to say. Trust me. Let's dive in. What is Total War Saga Troy? Troy is Creative Assembly's latest release and second Saga title. Saga titles are Total War games that focus on a tighter geographic scale and a more focused time period. They are designed to be experimental, bringing about mechanics as a sort of test release that can then be fine-tuned for future larger titles. Think of Saga titles as larger than a DLC, but smaller than a full title game. The Total War franchise features a combination of turn-based strategy empire building on a gorgeous campaign map combined with real-time strategy battles where you are in command of blocks of troops using battle tactics to defeat the opposing army. In this saga title, you'll have to navigate your way through the economic, divine, diplomatic, and military portions of the campaign, where you will either conquer the Aegean as one of four epic Greek heroes, Achilles, Agamemnon, Menelaus, and Odysseus, or safeguard Troy on the other side as Trojan epic heroes Paris, Hector, Aeneas, and Sarpedon. Troy was designed to be a hybrid experimental game, and for Total War players of both history and fantasy, you will see a solid mixture of the two throughout. There is a lot of Warhammer 2 in its design, but there is also a very historical feel, led primarily through unit rosters and the new economic resource system. This combination in design is actually pulled off fairly well, and having played both sides of Total War, I was immediately comfortable in all settings of the game. But let's get down to the specifics and the nitty gritty. Superb Game Design if there are a few areas that Creative Assembly has never been a disappointment in, it would be overall game design. What I mean by overall game design is the UI or user interface, the campaign map, its music, etc, etc. The user interface in Total War Saga Troy is easily the most accessible of the series. If I have to search for any information, which has only happened a few times while playing, I have easily found my answer. Otherwise, everything has been displayed very effectively. Troy does a fantastic job combining the open information style of Total War Three Kingdoms with the design hierarchy of Total War Warhammer 2. And while some would say that the iconography is basic, boring, or otherwise off for the game, I would have to say that as a designer myself, the entire setup is likely the most thematically relevant and on-brand of the franchise. We are talking about an ancient time period after all, and the world-renowned black art pottery style as its base. It just works so dang well, and I give a lot of props to the Sophia team for some fantastic UI design. The campaign map itself is full of life, brought about in part thanks to the day-night cycle option of the map, but also with wildlife, settlement fires and noises, simple nature animation, and even the rugged landscape. I was a bit concerned about how effectively they were going to be able to pull off a campaign map with the varied and oftentimes rugged terrain of Greece and the surrounding smaller islands, but the layout works extremely well, and while there is a lot of potential water travel, there is a very easy strategy to island hop so as not to get caught out in the open. The music, especially on the campaign map, is one of the more basic soundtracks in the franchise, with heavy low and mid drones mixed in with some action tracks when things get a bit hot on the battlefield. While the soft tones and low key tracks are soothing and methodic, my only drawback is that these tracks might become the least memorable in the franchise, especially after the music variances we get from Total War Three Kingdoms. That doesn't mean they're bad by any means, but a few of the tracks, 
but few of the tracks in this game have a memorable imprint on me outside of playing it. While there are so many other areas of this game I could incorporate into this section of the review, the point is this. The combination of all of these factors creates an archaic and simpler time than what we are used to with Total War games. Nothing in the designs cater to a complex or an advanced civilization. It all really just plays to the thematic idea of a Bronze Age game, something that few games have really been able to accomplish outside of something like City Builders. I had no idea what a Bronze Age Total War game would look like from a design standpoint, but Creative Assembly's Sophia team have crafted a superb idea of it within this game. The Experiment as mentioned earlier in this review, Saga titles are meant to be experimental in some aspect of their design. For Thrones of Britannia, it involved a host of different ideas, primarily in the form of estates and units requiring food for upkeep, which, after the major updates, ended up working out extremely well for the game. For Troy, the experiment lies in the expanded economic idea of multiple resources within a game instead of one single money currency. Total War Saga Troy features five resources, food, wood, stone, bronze, and gold. Each minor settlement in the game generates one of these five resources, and they are all needed throughout your entire campaign. Food is for recruiting units, with bronze added in for later tier stronger ones. Wood and stone is necessary primarily for buildings in your settlements, and gold is the most prized possession where you'll be able to use it for about everything, including a superior bargaining tool. The multiple resource system works extremely well. I haven't found anything very unbalanced in their production or their expenditure. It's a great system that allows the player to do a decent bit more every turn than in previous games. Whereas in the past, it often came down to choosing between recruiting units or building in your settlements because of gold limitations, you don't have to make that choice in Troy, since they're now broken up by resource type. I've always been an advocate to have more to do on the actual campaign map that wasn't just busy work, and thanks to the resource system, I have that satisfaction. It also plays a heavy hand to Empire expansion. Three Kingdoms played well to that idea of planned expansion since you needed food to keep your empire alive. This is the evolution of that beginning idea. Food is essential to keep your armies fully up and running, so finding one quick is key. Eventually, you will need bronze and gold to survive for those higher tier units, and those settlements might not be in the direction you'd normally expand to. So, you have the choice to make some deals with the factions that own them, or change your normal plans up a bit to go take those specific settlements. For those that like to paint the map, that is still completely doable inside of Total War Saga Troy, but your normal path of conquering will definitely be a bit altered as you seek out specific resource generating settlements. If there's one thing I don't care too much for in regards to resources is that it is indeed a bit basic. The experiment idea is a huge gamble, especially for the Sophia team, and I'm not downplaying that at all. But it doesn't feel like enough of an experiment. It lacks the punch of a new mechanic that's supposed to shake up the system. The estates and food mechanic from Thrones has that feel, and it made things difficult at times. I also believe that Seasons made that mechanic have that punch that is lacking in Troy. There are no seasons in this game, much like in Warhammer, so food and other resources are always going to be a constant. The population mechanics from Three Kingdoms were a great addition that played towards gold and food generation, but that's lacking here as well since the population surplus system is also taken from Warhammer. There's a pattern here. The very shallow campaign mechanics of Warhammer seem to hold back the potential depth that a multi-resource system could have for this game, and it's a bit of a shame. Again, the multi-resource system is indeed a 100% fantastic addition, but the gamble just doesn't have the impact that I think it could. Divine Will I would consider the god system to be a much smaller experiment for Troy than the resource system, and it's not entirely new to the series at all. In Troy, you have access to seven gods of the time period, Hera, Zeus, Ares, Apollo, Athena, Poseidon, and Aphrodite. While these gods aren't physically represented on the map, you can generate favor towards them through temple construction, sacrifices, and priestess actions. As your favor increases towards a single god, the cult of that god grows, and as that god becomes more worshipped, you unlock better benefits to your faction. 
This hybrid system from Warhammer is another positive step forward for the franchise, although its future use, in my opinion, might be fairly limited. I've always thought the multi-god system in games like Rome 1 and 2 were extremely basic and had no real impact on gameplay as a whole. That changes drastically with Troy, as each god caters largely to certain factions or personal playstyles that can give you some serious advantages throughout your campaign. It is possible to worship multiple gods at the same time as well, though that will take some careful strategic handling, but even then can have greater results as you play. The system is extremely important to your campaign, I must emphasize. Learn how to use it because it is a necessity. An atheism run is doable, but you'll have a very long road ahead. Superior Battles and AI Having played several stages of development in this game as a Total War content partner, I have a very solid look at the progression and capabilities of the AI in Total War Saga Troy on the battlefield. What I can say in confidence is this. Troy has some of the most capable AI I have seen in recent years, especially in Siege Warfare. With most Total War games, it's fairly easy to cheese the battle AI into some quick wins, even on higher difficulties. And indeed, I have done this several times in my playthrough on Troy. But I will often get a surprise with a capable AI that really challenges my own competence in battle, and it's very often come down to some key units that grab me the victory or the loss. The battles themselves are a dilemma for me, and it's caused some questions among other Total War content creators as well. A battle in Total War Saga Troy is on par with a Warhammer battle in terms of length, and in fact this was a pretty negative feeling towards battles in general during an earlier access build, that the battles were too insanely fast so that you couldn't even pull off any strategy moves to win or lose a battle. However, despite having what is considered to be a short period of time for battle length, it actually feels like a much slower battle and I don't quite understand how. I have been able to actually pull off maneuvers in Troy battles, set up ambushes inside a battle, and not worry about microing 20 units the entire time. I can sit back and see the battle unfold most of the time. Again, I'm not sure how the dev team accomplished this. The battles last less than 10 minutes, and in Warhammer I'm constantly microing to stay alive inside that same time period. Maybe it's the lack of magic as a whole, or maybe it's because they're all humans, and the rock paper scissors aspect is just a bit slower than the fantasy standard and it plays a part. Again, I don't fully understand why, but I am glad that it feels this way. I believe part of the reason for my enjoyment of battles are the maps. I have desperately wanted to see Creative Assembly implement the Total War Arena style maps into their games, and it seems that with this saga title, the Sophia team were allowed to run with it with immense success. Battle maps no longer feel like empty spaces for armies to just go at each other to cater to the multiplayer playstyle. There's ledges, hills, chunks of rocks and tall grass that create great spots for ambushes, ways to sneak around enemy lines, and just provide parts of the map to draw the enemy in. It's been a while since I truly, truly enjoyed playing maps in a Total War game, and Troy is easily at the top of my recent games list in that area. One last bit about AI, and it lies with sieges. In general, settlements in Troy follow the lines of Throne of Britannia, several avenues of approach, with open hold points for larger scale battles, but still heavily favoring the defender. It's the competence of the siege AI while defending that has really blown me away. Instead of camping on walls and getting picked off, units will retreat and try and hold a higher or more strategic ground. The pathfinding of the AI is way better than most siege AI in the entire franchise. I have been repelled on a few siege battles that I would have 100% won in other games, but the AI knew exactly where to hold their ground and when to readjust. I was very impressed and I'm glad to see battles as a whole get a bit more difficult and competent for the franchise. The truth behind the myth. This section is my transition, whereas I've been very positive about the game thus far, this is my neutral ground before going to the not so great parts. Throughout development I have been heavily critical of this truth behind the myth road the game has taken. It seemed a way to bring both historical and fantasy together, but for the most part it seemed to just piss both sides off, which coincidentally may have brought both of the sides together, united against CA but it seems weak in its attempt, half-hearted, and destined to fail. The idea of having these interpretations of mythical concepts, 
transforming centaurs into cav or minotaurs into a person with an ancient furry fetish seemed very muddy on first playing. And indeed, when I stumbled upon these unique areas of the map where I could recruit these unique units and get that flashy unique area pop up, I sort of rolled my eyes at first. Yet as I kept playing, my distaste at this blended interpretation lessened more and more. Being quite honest, there is so much going on in this game that works very well, from the resources to the gods to the UI and the story, that I just ended up rolling with it. Having played Warhammer for multiple years, it didn't kill me to have a single entity unit in my army, and as an infantry heavy game, I didn't see centaurs as some sort of half-assed attempt to cater to both sides of the Total War community, I just took it as a unique cav unit, that's it. When it comes to the Minotaur and other single unit entities, those aren't even available to you until around the mid game, so you won't even see them for a good while during your campaigns. What ended up happening was that my irateness towards this one area of the game ended up being such a small part of the entire game that it was no longer a hill to die on for me. Sure, it's still a bit weird, and sure they could have taken a bolder stance on one side of the fence or the other, but it ceased being a problem for me and I honestly think it could help you enjoy the game in the end. The Big Bad Wolf Balance if there's one global issue with Total War Saga Troy, it's balance. Thankfully, balance is one area that the dev team can definitely work on, but it does cause some decently big frustrations. If you've watched my critique to the devs video on the campaign build we played before this release version, you will know there are two main areas that need some serious balancing, and those areas are still present as of this review, Heroes and Agents. The heroes in Troy need some attention in that they are way too powerful in the early game. Too many of my battles have been over within minutes in terms of units of soldiers fighting, then the next 5-8 to eight minutes seeing a hero duking it out with either my own units, often routing them mind you, or fighting another hero who is just as tanky. I fully understand that heroes are meant to be a sort of unit that can hold an army together in a battle or be able to turn the tide with some strategic abilities played at the right time. What a hero should not be though is a legendary level lord from Warhammer or even Three Kingdoms. A hero that can take on 5 units in Troy is about 4 units too many for the early game in my opinion. Battles become less about strategy and more about having to worry about a tank when all you have are sticks and stones. I would rather have a weaker and more vulnerable hero that requires skill to keep him alive in the early game and then as he levels up is able to get super tanky because by the time that happens you'll be going up against higher tier units that will also be able to take on that tank more easily. The next one is Agents. For those that don't know by now, Agents have made a physical return to this quasi-historical title. Agents are incredibly useful in Total War Saga Troy, able to assassinate, demoralize troops, and win favor with the gods. But they also have a problem that's persisted the entire franchise, Agent Spam. At no point in a campaign should a player ever have to worry about dealing with six or more agents all trying their damnedest to kill your hero or screw with your settlements. The AI's obsession with targeting the player means that multiple factions will all descend on a single target until that AI's mission is complete, at which point their focus will all go towards the next target. The agent spam in Troy brings about a real sense of dread, much like in any other Total War game and it's enough to affect your gameplay and be beyond annoying, but gameplay altering. I do sincerely wish that Total War would work on ways to curb the AI's desire to spam their units, especially together, all at once. I know the community as a whole would appreciate it. The Copy Pasta This section was added in after I wrote my final statements on the game, so it will be short and sweet, but addresses an issue a handful of us creators all felt. As I've harped on before, this is a smaller game with a smaller budget. Therefore, there will be character personalities, mechanics, assets, etc, etc, that feel simply renamed and re-implemented into Total War Saga Troy. There's a lack of depth in the game that stems from this copypasta style of design. Nearly every one of the faction's unique mechanics are copied and slightly modified from other games, or at least it seems so. Odysseus and his safe havens are just a Vampire Coast rework. Agamemnon's vassal mechanic seems like a Bronze Age Yuan Shao. Hector's Asua League is the White Tiger's mechanic, but for Trojans, 
and even Sarpedon's trade mission mechanic is reminiscent of both Cao Cao and the High Elves' ability to manipulate agreements and influence politics. In truth, Paris and Hector's Priam's air mechanic and Menelaus' Spartan colonies seem to be the only truly unique mechanics I noticed while playing. I do think that all these mechanics work for their characters they've been given to, don't mistake my distaste. It's just that it's hard for me to find depth in a mechanic that you can clearly tell was simply rebranded with some bronze and a bit of gold then put into this game. It's shiny for a bit, but it wears off quickly, especially if you play Three Kingdoms or Warhammer. The Epic Elephant I have to address the elephant in the room because it is such a driving wedge across the community. Total War Saga Troy is an epic exclusive, announced to the surprise of the entire fanbase. Creative Assembly worked out a deal with Epic and received a lot of money no doubt for the exclusive, which most likely pissed off more people even more. And while several of us, myself included, suspected that this was because Creative Assembly had no faith in their game, after playing a handful of campaigns, I really no longer believe that to be true. I fully believe now that the Epic deal was a business move in its entirety. It's a way to get Total War's foot into the door for multiple platform releases, and why not do it with a smaller budgeted game that has zero ties to any major release? With the game being free for the first 24 hours, it opens up the Total War doors to a countless number of people who maybe have never even touched the genre before, much less played a Total War game. Do I agree with the Epic exclusive surprise? No, not at all. It sucks when you promote a game to be released only on Steam, then turn around this close to release and drop this type of news bomb sell onto your community. I don't agree with the exclusive, but I honestly don't have that big of a problem with it being on Epic. I would love it if other platforms had the chance to sell Total War games, and it would be great to see people cross-playing Total War from all those platforms. And any chance that Creative Assembly, or any developer really, can expand their player base, I'm all for it. There are of course other reasons why people hate EGS, from its poor accessibility to part ownership by Tencent. And those are definitely reasonable, I don't want to play those down. You have a valid opinion in that regard, and therefore a personal reason not to grab it. But most of the hate towards EGS I do feel is a bit unfounded, and I can almost guarantee that a good majority of people who comment negatively towards EGS will end up grabbing Troy day one from the Epic Store, let's face it. It's another Total War game. With all of this laid out in the open now, it's time for me to present my final opinion on Total War Saga Troy. Troy has a lot going for it. It's a gorgeously crafted title, and Creative Assembly's ability to evolve that part of their franchise is bar none in the strategy genre. Their experiment and risks paid off and created some great new system that, when further developed, will make for some potentially game-shifting mechanics for future titles. And considering where the game was even a month ago to now, there have been an immense amount of improvements that have made an impact on my opinion of the game. The Sophia team busted their butt to get the game to where it is now, and that dedication is extremely appreciated in my mind. And I am for the very most part enjoying the game. It has some of the best maps in the franchise, competent AI makes for great challenges, and I enjoy the options I have to expand my empire using the new resource system. Having to balance the gods in the midst of everything isn't tedious, it's a welcome challenge that helps out my playstyle immensely. It's a well-designed, very solid game without a doubt. Yet, yet, ultimately, it's just another Total War game. I truly and honestly, amidst all the praise, don't see me playing two, three hundred hours of this game aside from creating guides to help the community learn the game. Being a saga title means that those copy pasta feels are pretty big, and this causes a lack of depth that prevents a game from being truly epic and groundbreaking. As a brand new Total War player, or even a very casual Total War player, I think this will be a great game for you. There is indeed lots to do to keep you occupied, with a solid list of paid DLC and free DLC on the way. For Total War veterans on both sides of the historical fantasy fence, this might just be a pit stop for you. Veterans should quickly be able to grasp all concepts and work their way through the campaign, as not too terribly much has truly changed. But hey, it's free for the first 24 hours, and from that standpoint alone, why wouldn't you grab it and play? 
I know I would, even if I hadn't received a copy from the developer. Free is free, and Total War Saga Troy is definitely worth the free price, and heck, I'd even recommend it for the paid price as well. That's all for my very long review on Total War Saga Troy. Let me know what you think about the game in the comments section down below. If you're here within 24 hours of release, grab that game for free. If you're late to the party and still want to buy it, I highly recommend going to the Epic Store via the link in the description or the pinned comment section, as any sale of the game through that link directly supports this channel. I'll be generating some guides for new players to Total War, so if you are new, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. If you are not new to the game, heck, you may even learn something you never knew. Thanks for watching everyone, this is Havoc, and I will see you in the next video.